Yes, Peter, you tell us who you are. J James, Ian Poulter from Trident. Uh, a fairly simple question, really, though it's probably quite complex to answer, is given that there are so many people who have skills who have recently been put out of work for no fault of their own, and given that there are many young people coming through who have never worked at all for school leavers, what is your government intending or your intended government intending to try to put those two cohorts of people together, people who are skilled already and have expertise of work, with young people who have skills, are really keen and want to work and haven't had experience of work, to try to actually generate new work? Okay, uh, we'll take both the questions. So, uh, uh, so I understand that and you're, you're obviously seeing uh, uh, a complementary uh, work here of some of the unemployed, at least in the short term, helping some of the youngsters. Interesting question, interesting James reaction to that one. And there was one other question. Uh, yes, yeah. please. Where are we? Peter yeah. Pees, I'm um, from Essential Partners. Policy is all very well, and I've, I've worked in the sector for about 20 years. Um, the issue is always about how government ministers get the civil service to actually implement the policy that they have got. An analogy was given at this conference a couple of years ago about you know, a, a very erudite government minister who had some very good policies, but it was a bit like pouring water into the top of a sponge. You never actually really knew what was going to come out of the bottom of it. And the civil service that we have to deal with as a sector, as an industry, is very, very difficult to get to actually operate the policies that successive governments have brought into place. And I just wonder what your plans are for actually making the civil service do what you want it to do. Mm. Two very difficult questions. No, I think there's two, I think the two, two excellent questions. Um, Ian's, Ian's question at first, on the newly unemployed, I mean, I think the key di one of the key differences between what we want to see and what's happening at the moment is we want to see a much more accurate profile built up of a new claimant at the very beginning of their claim uh, and of the sort of help that they need. Uh, there may be somebody who is readily employable with, with up-to-date skills, uh, which will make them uh, attractive to a, to a new employer. In a case like that, obviously such a person must be given a, some time in the, a, a while, up to six months, uh, to, to, to find uh, such a new employer. There may be somebody who's, who's coming, into the, uh, coming into the jobs marketplace with rusty skills which may no longer be, uh, be appropriate or uh, uh, for, for some, whatever reason less attractive to an employer. We need to identify that person and get help to them at a much earlier stage than they get at the moment, rather, you know, as, as, as the moment leaving people uh, under the, the phases which are envisaged for the New Deal um, and job seekers. Uh, really, they need help at a much earlier stage. They may need help to get new skills, um, we want to see help much, much more readily available to them and geared to their individual needs. And on the young people, this is a particularly um, serious problem uh, because there is a serious policy failure in the system of, of helping young people, 16 to 24 year olds, uh, because quite frankly, the present New Deal was failing even before the recession came along. Uh, unemployment among 16 to 24 year olds started going up long before the recession took hold. It started going up in 2004. And that's, that suggests to me that we need a whole different approach, uh, both in the sort of help which the Department of Work and Pensions is given, uh, and also in the system of training and apprenticeships. And I know you've made some very helpful suggestions about train for gain and the, the, the training system, but we do need to have a very good look at that uh, and to make sure that young people are getting the, the skills which are really needed by employers. So I think there's a, there's a very big challenge there. And on the civil service, I'm uh, working with the civil service. I have to make a confession to you, I'm one of the, I, I was a government, in the la a minister I should say, a very junior minister, uh, in the last conservative government. I don't think there are many of us left in parliament now actually. Um, so going into a, if I do get the opportunity, which is up for, uh, Firstly, that's up to the electorate, and secondly, it's up to the, to the leader of the party, the Prime Minister, as he may be. Uh, but subject to those two provisions, if I, if I go in, I will be aware of some of the lessons I learned from the last Conservative government. Uh, first of all, uh, even if you're only a junior minister, you have to focus on your objectives. 
and focus on your tasks rather than end up running around doing lots of administrative things, which the civil service seems to have a wonderful way of occupying ministers' t time with. So I'll be much, much older and much more focused. But on the, on the question of the political will, as I've indicated, the key, one of, our, one of our key, if not the key proposal, is on the funding switch. And the obstacle to that has lain not in the Department of Work and Pensions, I suspect, but also in the Treasury. And we are putting this, we put it in our green paper, and I very much hope that it will be going into our manifesto as well. And it will, we will be going into the next election with this as a commitment for what we want to do. So we will have the mandate of the people behind us uh, in the face of anybody who tries to obstruct us. So I hope that that spells out sufficiently clearly just how committed we are to this, which is, if I could give one message to you, uh, is something which is going to make, to change the funding like this, it's going to make a very big change. Uh, we will be doing far more, far more, we're helping far more people than the government is presently helping, and we very much want to work with all the people such as yourselves uh, in fulfilling that ambition, in working together to, to try and really tackle the dependency culture which we think, if, if we don't take this sort of radical action, will continue and continue at the expense of all concerned. We think it's a very good ambition to have, and we want to work with all the people who are in the sector, such as yourselves, to try and tackle this problem and to give you the support and the help and the funding you need. James, I think uh, we could well continue that discussion and those questions and others. The time is going to prevent us doing it as does yours. So I'm going to cut it off there. Thank you once again for joining us and really looking forward to an ongoing dialogue with no, you and your colleagues. Thank you very much.